Welcome to Bytes of Code. In this video, we will start making our personal assistant. Pretty much the first step is we're going to tie into the microphone, and then this will allow us to speak to the computer and then the computer to do actions in return. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is import speech recognition as SR. And this is going to be actually the microphone recognizing what I am saying and then pretty much converting it to text. I'm also going to, while I'm here, I'm going to import the OS and we'll also do import keyboard because the keyboard will actually be the one that triggers the speech recognition. Then we're also going to do import sub process and we will use OS and sub process in this video, but pretty much one is going to be a good example and the other is going to be a bad example and we'll get to that later. So now I have my speech recognition, I need to initialize the engine. So we're going to make a variable just called R It's going to equal our SR dot recognizer. And this is going to be initializing our speech recognition engine. After this, we're going to be doing a with statement SR dot microphone as source. So the with statement is really just going to help us to make sure the resources and this microphone object is clean and pretty much deleted, removed whenever we're done with this with statement. Uh, a good example may be to, instead of this, to use a text file. So the as is going to be basically a result or the return from our with function. But the benefit of the with is that whenever we're done writing in the file at line 10, at line 11, we actually close the file. But the with statement already takes care of that. Now, in this case, this with statement could be pretty much exactly the same as just writing it without the if statement here. We initialize our F variable, open the text file, we write to the text file, and then at line 15, this is the important line, we close the text file. Now, having this at line 15 kind of introduces the ability to maybe have a mistake or an error that doesn't properly close and clean this file or this resource and release it back into the computer. So having a with statement pretty much handles this closing without us even needing to worry about it. So in our with statement, we have the microphone as our source and we want to listen to the microphone, but we want to do this pretty much all the time. We want this to always be available for us to speak to the computer. So we're going to have an infinite loop here while true. And I'm going to put a print statement here. That we're ready for the speech. And also while I'm here, I'll put another print statement that we're listening. So we're ready for the speech, but right in here, line number 12, we'll put in the keyboard shortcut or the keyboard combination to start listening. So in this case, whenever I press the combination control alt S, we will now start to listen. For listening, we're going to do a variable called audio data, and this is going to be equal to R, which is our speech recognition dot listen. This is going to take in two parameters. One is going to be the source because this is the microphone. This is our here in our with statement, our microphone object, we can say. And this will also take in a phrase time limit. So this is going to be kind of like the maximum amount of seconds that it will listen. So this is how long we have to tell our computer to do something. If we need to spend over five seconds to tell our computer, then we'll pretty much get cut off and it'll only get a piece of what we've said. I'm going to put a print statement here also for recognizing. Now we're going to actually get the text from our speech. So we're going to have a new variable called text. This is going to be equal to R, our speech recognition dot recognize. And there's different engines you can use. We're going to use recognize Google and we're going to give it the audio data that we just got. 
audio, the audio data in line 19 is the one that's going into this new speech recognition. And now we will be able to have actually text from our speech. I'm going to print out you said text wrong bracket. And let's go ahead and try this right now. So if we run it, we should see that it says ready for speech. So this actual microphone object needed a some brackets there. So we run our program. Now we will see that it should say ready for speech. Now when we press our keyboard combo, our computer microphone is listening to what we say for five seconds maximum that should say recognizing. And now we should be able to see what we've said. And there's our text. Now that we have our text, we can pretty much use this to do anything we want. So we're going to do a quick example of using this to open notepad. So we're going to say if our text was open notepad, but we're going to use this term open notepad. This is our string. We're going to see if this string exists in our text, but we're going to force our text to be lowercase. It's possible for our speech actually it might, may sound weird, but to be in uppercase. So we want to make sure that whenever we're comparing, we're comparing it all in lowercase. Uh, for example, also this is different than this because of the uppercase O. Even this with the uppercase P in the middle of open is different than this with everything lowercase. So we're forcing the entire text that was spoken to be lowercase, and then we're doing our comparison. Once we have this if statement, we can do OS system. And this is actually how we can start opening programs, but with one problem. So I put in the path to my notepad.exe and you can put in the path to whatever uh, application you want. But also opened, opened notepad, but also I want to make a point so that we can see this print statement after we open notepad. So let's give an example now of us saying we want to open notepad and looking at line number 27 to see if this print statement was hit open notepad. So notepad did open it opened in the background, but we can see also that line number 27 has not hit that it doesn't say yay, we open notepad. And that's because that this is actually blocking the notepad is actually blocking this line 27 from executing. When we close notepad, we'll see finally this breakpoint and we print out yay, we open notepad. So in order to work around that, instead of using os.system to open the executables, we want to do subprocess.p open to open our executables. Now, let's go ahead and run this. open notepad. So notepad will open, but we don't have to close it in order for line 27 to run. We get the print statement. Yay. We open notepad. So subprocess.p open is a lot better to use because it doesn't block the rest of the code from continuing. In our next video, we'll add some more operating system calls. We'll have a call to hibernate the computer and we'll also have a call to search the web browser for a keyword that you've said. And we'll also introduce a try accept into this while loop. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and I hope to see you at the next video.